I am. We are live. There we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the, uh, what What are we calling this? End of first free agency week, All Dolphins podcast live episode. Oh, uh, be. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I need to go uh, promote the product. Oh, no, well, he'll be right here. He just, he'll be right back. Uh, kind of quiet today on this Friday in terms of move after a whirlwind of activity on Wednesday and Thursday. There were a couple of things that happened late Thursday night. Um, there's a one coming, one going. The, the arrival was Jonathan Harris, defensive lineman from the Denver Broncos, as the Dolphins continue to add more big bodies on the defensive line. And pretty clear by now, it's going to be a by committee effort uh, along the defensive line. Um, and at some point, it's going to behoove me to look at what the Ravens did last year. I know they they did some rotation. I don't know if they, if they rotated as, ev- as heavily as it looks like the Dolphins are going to be doing. Um, they've now signed was it five defensive tackles from other teams in the past two weeks. Woohoo! Isaiah McDavid, Nixon, Neville Gallimore, Jonathan Harris, and I'm going to forget one. And I apologize to who I forgot. And they re-signed Deshaun Hand to go along with Zach Sealer and Brandon Peely. Uh, Sealer's going to get the bulk of the snaps, and then the other guys are going to be fighting for jobs and for roles and all that. Sounds like fun. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. And then the other bit of news last night was Cedric Wilson Jr. leaving to sign a two-year deal with the New Orleans Saints. Woo-hoo! Mark. Why are you so mean to the man? Why, why are you so mean? I, I give him his props because yeah. um, he pulled himself out of the garbage bin and became a contributor last year, um, primarily when they needed wide receivers because Waddle was hurt and, and Tyreek was hurt and Braxton Barrios wasn't doing anything. Um, he actually became the number three wide receiver, so props to him. Um, just – Okay. No, no. I mean, we can say now. No, we can say now that it, it wasn't a great free agent signing in 2022. But I'm going to maintain that had the Dolphins not gone out and gotten Tyree killed because he became oh, available. Stop. It. stop. It. You've no, been telling there. people this lie for over a year. Let stop. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. He was never good. When when they signed him and to replace Devontae Parker who and trade him away, not that Devontae Parker's was really good. Okay, Mr. No Separation. I mean Hey, he's still in the league with no oh, separation. I know. I know. He, got, he got a job before Cedric Wilson. Except he went a one year deal and Cedric got a two year deal. Anyway, hey, I don't what? you know what? To not be disrespectful to for Devontae Parker. Um maybe if he had a quarterback in New England, he'd probably still have a job. Okay. I mean, Devontae's proven he belongs in the NFL. Oh, I don't disagree. No, I don't disagree with that. Cedric Wilson Jr. has proven he belongs to the NFL, and maybe not as a $7 million a year player. <laughs> Dude, he's going to be going on year seven, so obviously. Yeah, I, I mean, nobody's here to see me take – I mean, I didn't think Cedric Wilson was a very good player, and I don't think nothing will ever change. And I thought that was a bad signing – a bad indicator that their talent evaluation was flawed um, because Cedric Wilson was supposed to replace Devontae Parker. Really? Really? Like, really? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, something, I'm sorry, but somebody screwed up. I'm not sure it's the downgrade it, that you think it is, but we, oh, we, come we, on. I don't want to spend the whole show on Cedric Wilson because no, 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 no. This is can't be overlooked and can't be glossed over because this was a master plan before Tyreek. Cedric Wilson. He got paid starter money. That was a master yes, plan. No, absolutely correct. Absolutely. And, that, and that was, and that so was so some, somebody's genius analytics said that this guy is gonna be a player. Like because he had a decent year, had like 45 catches. Huh? He had 45 catches with Dallas the year before. Think think about it this way, and I hate to continue to take shots at the young. And yet, and yet, here we go. No, 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 no. Because this is real. This is really an indication that something is wrong and flawed with this team's talent evaluation. Go ahead. What suppose one of these players that the Dolphins have signed 
to, as replacements for these players who got overpaid is as bad of a talent evaluation and a miss as Cedric Wilson was. How would you feel if that were the case and a center was bad or a, or a tight end was bad or one of these linebackers were bad or, you know, not that Shaq Barrett is, is tremendously needed or, or leaned on. Like Cedric Wilson was a major piece, was a major piece of that offseason before Tyreek got, got traded for if they weren't going to do anything else, sure. But again, we don't know exactly how it would have played out. Would it have played out the same for him in terms of his, con not to forget his contributions, because obviously that would have changed. But in terms of his performance and what he did with his opportunities, if not for Tyreek, I, I, to me, that's kind of an unknown. That's why I'm not ready to dump on him as much as you are, even though the price point for what they got out of him wasn't good. And by the way, uh, thank you, Jason. Jason pointed out, Benito Jones was the other defensive tackle that I omitted. How dare you forget Benito Jones? The one guy who actually had spent some time with the Dolphins is the one guy I forgot. How Excuse dare me. you, Alan Poupard? I suck. What can I tell you? I think that's pretty obvious by now. I couldn't even – if you put a gun to my head right now, I couldn't even name three of them. Couldn't. I'd have to look it up. Like, the, Well, we should mention also that today the Dolphins made official because all the moves we've talked about have been reported. For example – Jordan Poyer is still not official. It's been reported that he's agreed. Yes, he's in he's in he's in Mexico or someplace with Aaron Rodgers, well, which I go. thought was really weird. Like, what's his connection to Aaron Rodgers? Uh, he's on vacation with Aaron Rodgers. Did you okay. know that? I did not know that. No, I do not. No, no, no. He's a he's on vacation with Aaron Rodgers. I was watching some NFL show and they were talking about Aaron Rodgers being the vice president. Of the United States. Which is, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Which is just, you, you know, yeah. And he dispelled some, he dispelled Sandy Hook that he thought Sandy Hook or Col I don't remember what it was that was, was not real. And because, you know, he's a political candidate, Aaron had to come out and address it on his social media platform, but did not address the fact that, hey, I'm not running for vice president. Like my focus is on football, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, besides that. And then they're like, what's Aaron Rodgers doing? He's on vacation in Mexico or the Caribbean with Jordan Poyer. And I was like, huh? Like, what? Like, what is their connection? How do they know each other? And I still don't have an answer to that question. So when we do get Jordan Poyer on, and he's a Miami guy, so he trains here. I've seen him training at Bomberitos like 10 times. Um, very, very athletic guy, hard worker, total dog. Total dog. You know I love me some dogs. Um, bark, bark, roof, roof, dogs. I, I'm um, not doing the pan thing. I did it yesterday. I'm not doing it two days. I, I, I got to cut that up because it, it, it became a thing on social media. I'm surprised it wasn't put up already for us. Um, but I got I got to find that. Um, but, yeah, he's in Costa Rica. He's in Costa Rica with – See, you lied. You lied again to, to, to the people. You said he yes. was in Mexico. He's in Costa Rica with Aaron Rodgers. Like, why? Zip like, lining, apparently some some great zip lining area, areas. I don't know. Uh, anyway, can I? The thought I was started with is that the Dolphins have not made official the, the signing of Jordan Poyer. They made four moves official on Friday: Neville Gallimore, Anthony Walker Jr., Jody Fortson, mm -hmm. and uh, Aaron Brewer. Because so, they got a pass physical, so correct, and they have to like sign on the dotted line. Uh, not Poyer's, that Poyer's vacationing. But by the way, just as a follow-up to discussion we had earlier this week about how it does happen that a player can agree to terms with one team and then do a 180 and sign another team, Eric Kendrick said that. The line, veteran linebacker agreed to terms with the 49ers, I think it was Monday and then Tuesday, whoops, and then he turned around and signed with the Cowboys. What? Really? I'm not making it up. I don't make up stuff, contrary to popular belief. Shall we attack some of these yeah, questions? I up stuff. Sorry, I said apparently I make up stuff like uh, Kendall uh, Kendall Fuller scoring Kendall uh, yeah that's his name Kendall, Kendall Fuller. Fuller yeah being beaten for nine touchdowns I, I I don't know I'm just going on based on what the references says Pro Football Pro Football reference. reference correct and again this is this and this is where we get into I have no it. people are like he didn't allow nine touchdowns it was only eight I was like. Well, I saw somewhere that they said it was only five. I think it was Pro Football Focus had them on the on the hook for only five. And this is where, unless you watch every one of their game and you can you know for a fact that it was 
it was his responsibility then. Yeah. I mean, why. he might have given up two against the Dolphins. I want to I want to go back and watch that Dolphins game against I mean, and and no disrespect to the to the young man because his team totally was booty cheeks. I think his defensive coordinator got fired in the middle of the season, primarily because of second team spec, 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 secondary play. Um, uh, yeah, Ron Rivera wasn't it Ron Rivera their defensive coordinator? No, no not Ron Rivera. Rivera. Um, Ron Rivera was a head coach. Um, no, um, J- Fox. Jack Del Rio wasn't it Jack Del Rio? Jack Del Rio? It was Jack Del Rio. Why did I say it was Fox? Because uh, he worked with. What's Foxy doing? What's Fox doing lately? Come on, John Fox. I can't remember. Okay, we digress. Anyway, for for the record, by the way, because I because I've seen this out there, neither neither Omar nor I dumped on the signing of Kendall Fuller. Actually, we both we both agreed it's a good signing. the The only thing from my end, and I think from Omar as well, is as Omar likes to say, let's not pretend that they signed Jalen Ramsey two point oh. Okay. Question, Skyler. Thank you very much, Skyler. What's the chance Jarvik? Only Jarvik- on questions already. Damn. Why not? Why not? We just- here okay i forgot we're only doing an hour exactly got, yes chance jarvis comes back to miami you're 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 on the jarvis landry beat so what say you no jarvis is making too many waves i thought he he should have been quiet he should have been quiet you can't come out and say i'm better than everybody in the nfl right now you, you can't do that when you're looking for a minimum salary and an opportunity to get back in the door the humility is just not there um, I would love to see him come back here. And I agree with Jarvis. You're not going to tell me that there are 120 receivers that are better than him in the NFL right now. But like Braxton Berrios, come on, please. Like, seriously, like, let's, let's not do that. Um, but props to you know him for speaking up and the frustration and expressing how he feels and i'm sorry i've been covering the nfl for 16 years most of this league is political most of it it's not about talent it's it's not um you're gonna tell me it's about talent you're not gonna tell me it's all about politics it's not all about politics sorry. okay 40 percent is about talent 60 percent is about politics hmm. You gonna challenge me on that? Uh, you you, you want to start? You want to start fighting already? Is that what you want? Fifty-two point seven versus forty-seven point three. What gets the fifty-two? Talent. I think oh it's- come on! This league yeah. is way. They do so much dumb bull crap, and it's not. I'm sorry. It, it cannot be about talent. If it was talent, then seven teams would have lined up for Lamar Jackson last year when he was a franchise when he got the franchise tag wink it wink nod nod don't touch my quarterback huh wink wink nod nod don't touch my quarterback it, it's it's man this league is so political about and and about and that's the thing about jarvis i mean i i can't believe that he went off on like social media like Wait, hold on hold on, a second, hold on a second here's the thing can we all agree that jarvis has a very strong personality that is not for every t- he's a dog t- He's a dog. Well, there's a difference between a dog no, and being, no. a dog can hide. A dog cannot hide who they are. They are going to bite you. They are going to bark. Yeah, sorry, you're like, gonna tell me that you can't be you can't be a badass without without being somebody who's gonna who's gonna make waves. And that's that's the issue with with Jarvis right now at the stage of his career. I don't know that he's at a point where his ability can justify the fact that some teams will view him as a guy that. He's a lot, <laughs> and I and I love and I and I say this as somebody who loves Jarvis Landry. Yes, I mean one of my favorite players of all time because that dude, that guy is done. You know he gave you everything he had, every he, damn every thing, single every single play. Uh, Left it on the, I remember. I remember the point where he was playing with a broken back at the end of the season, and going up to the front office and begging Mike Tannenbaum to give him a contract extension. Yeah, and. They were like, no, we're going to let you play this out. And he still continued to play. Man, I would have – it's a wrap. I would have shut it down. Um, But that mentality and that dog mentality is why I love Jarvis, why I will always support Jarvis, why I will always – if you if you don't think Jarvis can help this team, 
especially what they added a lot of pieces that will help them. Janu Smith, Jody Fortson. I think those are two pieces that will help them. I don't know about Fortson's toughness, but if you don't think Jarvis can help you as a slot receiver, man, something is wrong with you people. And if you think he's done, he was never fast to begin with. Jarvis might always run a 4-8, but he was running a 4-8, giving you 1,000 yards, setting franchise records. I'd say bring him in for, for, for a look-see, see what he looks like. I don't think it's going to happen. Give, it, give, him the, say, give him the same contract that you gave Jody Fortson, who has done nothing in the league. After after you you give him a look-see, absolutely. Okay, let's move on. Oh, you mean you want to work him out first? Okay, I'm down with that. Yeah, I mean, the dude, dude that didn't, didn't play in a year and a half, yeah. I'm down with that. Make him run a 40. <laughs> five five two. Oh, he slowed down. Yeah, I mean, if he runs a five two, then we don't got to worry about it no more. You're like, yeah, yeah, you're done. You're you're cooked. Um, but yeah, make him run. Make him run forty. As long as it's under five, I think you're good. I think you're good to go. Photo trips. Thank you very much. First and foremost, thank you guys for what y'all do. What would be a priority signing for you guys before the draft? Omar. Mm. Of course, this is where I have to take out my list of. Oh, your talent list? My talent list. Uh, Deontay oh, Hardy is somebody who jumps out at me immediately. Hardy, really? Really? Who? Deontay Hardy, wide receiver for the Bills. The one who had the 96-yard punt return for a touchdown against the, the Dolphins in the <laughs> in the regular season finale. He got cut. He was part of that purge. I'm with Eric Armstead. I'm not going to let it go. On no, dude, side. He, signed with Jack he signed with Jacksonville. By the way, I was wrong yesterday. He signed with Jacksonville? Jacksonville, yes. How much money did he get? That I don't know. Uh, I right, look it up right now. Ah, damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. That's not. That's yeah. not. I'll give you another one. I like Hunter Renfro, and some people have mentioned him on the uh, chat. Don't, like, don't, don't have like the him. toughness I want. Don't have the toughness I need. Oh no, no, he's tough. He's very sm He's smallish, but he's tough. No man. The, okay. No, we're not gonna do I that. Said, I said what I said. No, we're not gonna do that. Where's the money? Where's Armstead's money? Said what I said. Um, Damn. Just look, looking at some names over here. It's uh, not leaked out. Okay. He had sixty-five million dead money. Uh, no. ta, 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 ta. Oh. Sorry. Um, Jacksonville's giving Eric Armstead three years, fifty-one million dollars. Okay. Three years, fifty-one million dollars. What did that average out to? Seventeen. 17 a year mm -hmm. mm, might be a little bit steep for Miami's taste, but I would, I would definitely do it. Yeah, but he's done. Uh, he's I, done. I mean, he's I, done. I huh? He's done. Yeah. He's that, that ship has sailed. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, doesn't mean that they shouldn't do it. What about Chase Young? You like he? Uh, he's going to be too pricey when you have, I mean, you can only devote so much money at that spot. Um, no, I'm not. I'm, and he played well for San Francisco in the playoffs, but there were a lot of times during the season where it was uh, the the effort and the consistency was being questioned there. Yeah. yeah like he wasn't always showing up. Uh, Ooh, you again, we, you have to factor in price. I factored, like I mentioned, I threw out Hunter Renfro, for example. Oh, so we're still bargain shopping, right? That we're doing? Well, no, but you can't um, because I could say Mike Williams would be a great third wide receiver and give you the size you want at the position, but how much you're going to pay for him. Is he really a slot, though? No, no, he's not a slot. But again, so let's, not slot? Pretend, let's not pretend like Hill and Waddle don't line up in the slot a lot of the time. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, but how much, how much, uh, Mike, will you, how much does he have left? I mean, we're just, uh, we'll just, dude's a stud actually last year. His numbers were, were his best, but he got, again, he got hurt, tore an ACL like early in the season. He tore an ACL? Yes, the dude's always hurt. That's the problem with the dude. But he's, I didn't know he tore an ACL. He tore an ACL like week four or five or something. Like What's that. his name again? Mike Williams. Jesus, how many Mike Williams are there in the NFL? Oh, there have been a few. By the way, did, did you? Oh no, no, no! Oh, you're thinking Mike, Mike Williams? No, what about the um the one with the Saints that that Tyreek wants? Michael? Th no, no, I don't want Michael Thomas. No, no. My, my, Tyreek doesn't want Michael Williams. He wants Michael Thomas. I don't care what Tyreek. No offense, but I don't care what Tyreek wants. Oh, I should, you should care what Tyreek wants. What Tyreek wants? Tyreek, Tyreek wants, wants Hunter Renfro. By the way, if you, if you're going to go down that road, Tyreek wants. Hunter Ty Tyreek was just trolling the world. As Tyreek often does. Okay, then, then, then why, then why can't we say that he's no? But, but he volunteered Michael Thomas. 
He he he. We didn't. We, he wasn't trolling the world. He just put that out there in the universe. I don't want to, personally. I'm, I don't think that that would be a great move for that. I'd get to go. I'd, I'd rather get Tyler Boyd. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to bring up your homeboy, Justin Herbert. What about him? And all of his weaponry. Why? It's here's a here's a very this here's a very important question here, Omar is what does that have to do with the dolphins? It it has to do with the Go dolphins ahead. because he will spend his entire career compared to Tua. That's fair. Now now he's now he's at the exact same point Tua began his career with with nothing. Nothing. Are we calling Jalen Waddle nothing? Are we looking strictly? Because if you're looking strictly at 2020, it's a bad comp because Fitzpatrick put up really good numbers with those same crappy weapons that Tua had. And so if we're going to move to 2021, Jalen Waddle was on that team. So Jalen Waddle crap? No, but Jalen Waddle was a rookie and they turned into a slot receiver. It, it, let, let, let's stick to 2020, okay? Let's stick to 2020. There was nothing here. Don't there, there was something there was something for for Ryan Fitzpatrick who had like a 96 passer rating and put up points. So again, this is a this is a no offense, Omar. It's a stupid garbage argument that we keep going back and forth. And I know you get a kick out of it on on Twitter. I know you I love it. I love it. I know you love it. You like you like stirring. You like you like this. Like, stirring the crap. Like, I love it. Like who cares? I, hey, this is not the All Chargers podcast. The All Dolphins podcast. I, I I love I love the the memes on social media. Oh my. <laughs> I'm enjoying them. Oh, I know. I know you, you get a I really like he has got that. Like, I'm like, what is Harbaugh doing? Like, well, the the as the story goes is they they shook Keenan Allen down for a pay cut, and he was like, mm, no, nah, I don't think so. So they said goodbye. Because mm -hmm. uh -huh. the truth is, a lot of those receivers, I'm gonna tell you a, a, a secret I know from my am athlete. A lot of those receivers don't believe in Justin Herbert. Okay. Well, there you go. They think he's got. They think there's something missing. They okay. think he, they, they they think he's Tannehill, which Ooh. is, yeah, personality wise. Which, which, which is, is which is, to point out, uh, was his NFL comp before he came into the draft. Yeah. Which is why, even though I had I had not studied him greatly, I was very I was squeamish about him because I didn't I mm -hmm. wasn't a huge Tannehill guy, so it was like. Mm. Um, I went to, I know, I know I've told this story before. I went to the uh, Senior Bowl that year. Probably might be my last time at the Senior Bowl. Uh, specifically to just meet Justin Herbert and talk to him and be in his space and interact with him mm -hmm. for about 10 minutes. I just needed that because I needed to know. And you know what I walked away with? No. This guy's Ryan Tannehill. Like, it's just, there's just something that dis disconnected their personality wise and you know i'm surprised ryan Tannehill has not found a job yet um uh, I mean, but how many backup quarterbacks hey, hold on wait a minute wait 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 wait, wait, wait. No, 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 hold on hold on i'm, I'm trying to, well garner Minshew went to the raiders the jacob Steelers. jacoby Brissett got a job jacoby Brissett, you know that guy's garbage yeah. you you don't don't even deny that I, I hate using the word garbage to describe a player. That guy's he's, bad. He's, that, pedestrian. he's pedestrian. How's that? Okay, he's pedestrian. Tannehill is at least not pedestrian. Oh, he is now. I'm sorry. He is now. Yeah, he's he's every bit that kind of quarterback. Yep. Really? Yep, 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 yep. He had, he had two. The last time he was playing, he did take a team to the AFC Championship game. That was 2019 after. Like, no. His, yes, it was. was. No, that was the. that. Oh, yeah. that. Uh, yes, you're. No, 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 no. It, it led to the two of Flores beef. No, it wasn't 2019. It was 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. what are you talking about. Okay, I'll look it up while you continue. It was a Tennessee game. He won the AFC championship. He won the, a he won the AFC um, number one seed. I'm Correct, sorry. and they got bounced in the first round by Cincinnati, which went on to the Super Bowl. They, they the, the Titans went to the AFC Championship game in 2019 when they upset Baltimore. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I, I, I apologize. I misstated okay. myself. Okay. When he won the number one seed without Derrick Henry in the AFC. Without Derrick Henry. He did in what? 2021. Hold on. Without Derrick Henry. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Hold on. Derrick Henry was injured. Was he now? Mm-hmm. Maybe I have selective memory here. Because that on. yeah, they beat him. They beat him with um a Texas running back. That game, yeah. Uh Derrick Henry played. Well, you're right. He played eight games, ten touchdowns. You're right. Uh as Deontay Foreman had a big game for him. Yeah, Deontay Foreman. Look at All you. Right. Look at you. How about that? Uh, how about that? No, you gotta okay. do it right. Stop. Don't do it. If you're gonna do okay. it, do it right. right. How about that? Okay, thank you. Let's let, let's move on. We we got off the rails because why? Because you felt like trolling. Okay. <laughs> no, here we go. Let's no, I felt like giving the people what they wanted, which is for me to troll you about Justin Herbert. I know exactly. Um, got to give the people what they want. And by the way, I'm, it's not like it's not like I'm blind to this to this issue of like Justin Herbert hasn't quite yet put it all together, and that there's the element that's missing is there. We talk about that dog. It might. It, it hasn't necessarily surfaced with him. Not and that two has got the dog. Either. Correct. And 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 but the fact still remains that twenty eight GMs would take Herbert over to it. That's just a fact. You're correct. Okay. Uh, no, thank you very much. I'm donating the price of the Sports Illustrated Kansas City Chiefs commemorative Super Bowl edition, so Alan can add it to his collection. I have no idea what that means. I, I still want to know if anybody wants to buy my Chad Henny bobblehead. Oh, Forty dollars, including shipping. How about this one? Do you want this one? Which which one is that? Oh, come on. How dare you not know this? Oh, my God. That's a tool bobblehead. How dare you not know this? Oh, oh from, from his, his – um, Why do you have draft, a tool bobblehead? Draft. Why do you have a tool bobblehead? To prove, to show and prove that I'm not a hater. <laughs> and by the way, for those who could be wondering, this is hard, so no way I can't stick pins in it. <laughs> I, I know somebody would be like, yeah, that's why you have it. So, no, there you go. All right. Uh, no, you'll have to explain that one to me because I'm sorry, I don't get it. Uh, ITZ Legion, thank you very much. Since Wilkin left, think Dolphins taking DT at 21. DT or OT? One of the big boys. Or Edge, maybe? Nah. Mm -mm. Like I said, or Edge. No, there's no Edge in this. There's no, there's no. Like two from UCLA. That would be your Edge. Okay. All right. Cool. Forgive me after his first name escapes me right now. It starts with an L, but I don't remember all. Uh, I'll go get my draft guide just so I can be educated. Okay. I'll read a couple of questions without you then. So I don't have to deal, I don't have to deal with you. <laughs> Celebrate. Right. Sandman 10, 1001. Thank you very much. Welcome seem like the emotional leader of the D. How important is that role? And who do you think picks it up? Does it help Weaver sideline DC? Does it help Weaver? Oh, does, it, does it help that Weaver's a sideline DC? Um, does that make a difference? I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, who picks up the emotional? Bradley Chubb. Um, I don't know Jordan. I don't know this Jordan Brooks, but he seems like a very animated individual. Um, uh, based on no, not based on media, but based on what we've seen. Um, I would think David Long Jr. would be, in terms of personality. Uh, David Long Jr. is kind of a maniac, so I don't know. If, so, yeah, maybe, but I don't know if he's a leader type. Like, Christian was just, Christian was everything you wanted as a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, Javon Holland. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I'm not sure. Jalen Ramsey, uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure. You're not sure he's buying in? Okay. I got you. Well, I get I get Jalen Ramsey incorporated vibes at times, if you know what I mean. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I can't believe you said that. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not saying anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna leave me hey, hanging there. Because I'm gonna say something, and then it's gonna be me that's the target. Mm -mm, not, uh, I don't Why know. It it who's a target? It's like unless unless you add to what I said. I didn't say nothing. I ain't say nothing. I'm, okay. I got nothing to say on the subject. Okay. Like, I don't want no smoke. Like I said, Taylor, all... got, Taylor got smoke for you if you, you know, come. Oh, absolutely. But I'm, I'm just saying he gives off that kind of vibe. Hey, man, he's a businessman. They should, you know. Thank I, you. I Thank you. I don't fault anybody for being a businessman in the NFL. Not a single one. Because these teams will do some ruthless crap. You've seen it right now. Look how many teams are cutting guys. Of course. 
who it's ruthless. This is a this is a ruthless league. What you not but you're not they saying can't celebrate these moves and these decisions and they they don't honor the contracts that they sign and fans are like, "Oh, that's going to make my team better." No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. In certain instances it can and Omar, but you're not saying anything that that people shouldn't already know. They don't care though, but they should. They don't care. Why should they? Because these people are, when they're done and 10 years out of the league, some can barely walk. Some are battling CTE. Some have mental issues, some neurological issues. Um, this game kills people. And the fact that they don't have guaranteed contracts and the fact that they are just thrown away like trash, like a, a, a hamburger wrapper, like that's wrong. This league is wrong. This but league is disgusting omar every contract includes guarantees it's called signing bonus it's called Come where's on. where is the lie where is the lie and uh, and the other part too is i'm going to play devil's advocate not that not that you said anything that was not correct everything you said was was absolutely correct except this is the part where somebody might say nobody's forcing him to play you you get into this knowing exactly what the risks are and they make a, a ridiculous amount of money. Not compared to other leagues. That, that's a different conversation. Uh, and again, the yeah. idea, and I know it's, been, it's thrown out there on Twitter all the time by, by like non-playing like analysts and all that of like the NFL should, they, all NFL contracts should be all guaranteed. That doesn't work in a sport where attrition is, is such a big part of it. Not all contracts. It, it, and I have this conversation all the time with agents. And I remember I'll, I'll share this, um, this story. Take down the question, by the way. Um, I don't know how to find um, Right here. I, I, like, I remember I was, I was helping an agent find a price point for a very popular player who's been a pro bowler and he got a, a, a pay setting deal. And this was an agent who was a friend of mine and I was helping him negotiate with this team, which was notoriously frugal. And I, and I said to him like, okay, they don't have the money up front. Why don't you just go and become the first player at that position who gets a fully guaranteed contract for below market value, but you know, you'll walk away with every single dollar of that deal. And he was like, that is a good idea. It's a good strategy. My client would actually go for it, but you know what? I'd look bad to my peers and my peers would use that against me. And I was just like, this is so sick. Now, mind you, this player has gotten every dollar and more even out of his fake contract. I think maybe he just got restructured last year. Yeah. Um, but, and he's still a guy, still a very good player. But, Culturally, you know, the only player who's ever advocated for the business of the league has been um, uh, uh, the quarterback who just signed with Atlanta has been um, Kirk, Cousins. Kirk Cousins. He's been about that business and he's set paved the way and he set the trend and nobody followed except for the, the, the Cleveland. The, Cleveland. Yeah. Deshaun Watson. Yeah. And, and that was only because Cleveland was forced or backed into a corner to do it. So, but here's the problem. Oh my, here's the problem. Are you can't you can't go around giving five year, fully guaranteed contracts. For three. example, especially for non quarterbacks, and then they have a they tear an ACL after year two and they can't play again. So you're paying them, and this is why this is why like big signing bonuses. I don't want to say take the place of a fully guaranteed contract, but give some security and some money that you're going to get no matter what. So um, anyway, I don't want to, I don't know why we. You don't know why we're on that rabbit hole. I got to get my power cord. So go for the next question. Okay. We'll do. Dolphin 345 showing love to the best friends podcast. Long time fan. Thank you very much. Omar once had a pic of my dog watching X's and Omar as his Twitter background. Very cool. And Omar is not here. Um, also love Alan style where he sticks to the facts, not to mention his battles with two and on. What battles with two and on? Um, thank you, Dolphin. Who and I want that smoke with you? That's what battles with two and I. 
Yeah, no, because no, because some fans don't want to hear anything other than praise, showers of affection, and all that. Uh, and as right. the fan says, I try to deal in facts, both good and bad. So, but thank you again, Noah. Mark, did you read the part where the gentleman here said you once had a picture of your dog watching X's and O's as your Twitter background? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, that uh, yeah. Uh, when he struck uh, facts, not to mention his battle with Tuna. Um, thank you guys for thank you, Dolphin. Um, yeah, I love that picture. I, I wish I had never changed it, but I did. Way to go! But, thank you, JT24. Why did you change it, Omar? Um, I think I changed it for some I am athlete garbage foolishness, and then um, when I and and then I probably don't have that picture anymore. It's not you like still, you still have the I am athlete as, as your background. No, I do not. You don't on your Twitter? That's no. not your Twitter profile photo? Oh, uh, yeah, pr Twitter profile. Um, yeah. No, the background. The big banner is yeah, the, the All Dolphins podcast, as well yeah. as it should be. I like it. Okay. David, yeah. Big Bad David, how are you, David? Thank you very much. With the signing of Johnu Smith, do you think we should go wide receiver at 21 or go BPA? Also, do you think drafting a wide receiver at 21 would be a reach? Yes. Okay. It's a reach. Takes care of that. Um, it's, a, it's a tremendously deep wide receiver draft from what I hear. That means you don't have to draft one in the first round. You can pick one in the fifth round, and he'd probably be pretty good. Um, also, keep in mind that wide receiver for this team takes a minute because other offense is ultra complicated. Everybody has said that for two years. So players take a while to learn. Now, you could say Devon Achan learned it pretty quickly even though he was one of those guys that said, yeah, this is super complicated, but A-chan's a running back. They basically have seven plays. Um, Tyreek yes. Hill learned it pretty quickly. Huh? Tyreek Hill, despite all, all the – He was just making stuff up. Sure he was. Yes, yes. I do was. believe I do believe that. Tyreek, yes, yes, yes. Tyreek. How many times did we watch on Hard Knocks that Tyreek was out there running the wrong route still? And and two was like, it's okay. I'll find you. I'll figure it out. That, come on. That, that happened like three times on Hard Knocks. No. No? You're this, not buying it? No, I'm not buying it. And this notion of the offense being uber complicated, it's all great and dandy, except these guys have been playing football since they were tykes. This notion of like learning Most offenses as part of the process of playing football. And yes, some offenses and defensive schemes are a lot more complicated than others. And there's sometimes yeah. things called paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. But sure. no, I don't. I, if they don't take a wide receiver at 21, that won't be the reason to me. Uh, and as far as wide receiver or BPA, not that it's always the case. Chris Greer will always tell you that they're going to go BPA. And that's exactly should be because – Chances are what's not a need now in two or three years is going to be a need. So you want the best player you can get at 21. He is, whatever absolutely, position a BPA. He is absolutely a BPA GPM GM. He wasn't when he took Austin Jackson. Sorry. Again. Sorry. Damn. The shame. That's what I said. Jean-Pierre. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Uh, Greer is out here fleecing vets. You think T Hill is right? We owe Greer an apology. Thanks for the pod, Poop. Just love to all already. Yes, Poop. Love to all already. Stop it. What is it you want? No. I mean, <laughs> I like Toy. He's a good quarterback. I, I don't think I, I don't think he's as good as a, as a lot of Dolphin fans think he is. Sorry. Okay. Um, um put the question back because I you missed the first gonna... part. You just fixated on the two apart. Uh, Greer's out here fleecing vets. No, that's not accurate. No. Greer, Greer is out here. I'll be right back. Paying. Oh, wow. You're just going to leave me. Greer, Greer is out doing what I would have done for years. When people are targeting the first round, first tier free agents, he's targeting the second tier, locking it up, getting it done. When people are targeting the second tier free agents, he's out here targeting the third tier, locking it up, getting it done. Um, and they're picking the talent that they want that's all young. Um, I will say this, and I didn't know this until Alan Poupard tipped me off to it. What do I do now? I'm giving you praise oh, because you know how much I love the contracts and studying contracts and studying cap. 
I did not know this until you tipped me off to it. And I'm I'm saying it here and it's probably unhealthy because our peers are going to see it and read it and start to look into it as well. Don't do that then. Don't do it. Say it without saying it. 2025. Oh, uh, uh, then you got to write about it. I am going to write about it, but it takes a, a minute of research. Like you, I've literally been researching it all day because okay. I'm like, I'm like, hey, this is like important. This is significant. Like you're basically in position the way you've set up your team financially to reset your entire team in 2025. And I was like, holy crap, like this is strategically done and quite impressive to do it. So. Can I just say something here, um, Jean-Pierre, with this notion that Greer is fleecing veterans, if you got guys signing or agreeing and agreeing to terms on the first days of free agency, that tells you that they're taking what they think is going to be their best, their, best, their best offer. They're not jumping immediately yes. if they're getting under market value contracts. So mm -hmm. this idea of fleecing veterans, no. Yeah, not happening. Do we all grow an apology? Well, let's let's wait until December. Yeah, no, no, I ain't apologize for January. That. I'm not even sure Greer will have his job in a year. I said it. Well, yes, I'm you did. Off either. I've yes, said it all off season. Like I think this is his last stand. And, and we'll I'll say it take, the team that he puts together. It would take a massive collapse for me for him to be in jeopardy. That's just me. Or an eight win team. Okay. Uh, Lewis, thank you very much. Any he's truth? Jeopardy, they're an eight-win team. Sorry. You don't think he's in jeopardy if they're an eight-win yes. team? Yes. Yes, unless it, unless it, it's calamities, injuries, where you 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 have no choice but to use it as an excuse. Okay. Uh, Lewis Collins, thank you very much. Any truth to the rumor that Connor Williams may be career-threatening his injury and may not return to the NFL? Uh, I'll let you address that. Let's just say the scuttlebutt is it's a really bad uh, knee injury. And if he did retire, probably wouldn't you, Josh, should not drop to the floor. How about that? Is that well said? I don't want to speak for the man until he speaks for himself. I'm, dude, I'm, see what you do to me? Hey, but no, you heard it. You heard it before it started coming out. And I was just like, work for real? And hey, and here's the thing is also the fact that Drew has been very adamant about saying his focus, his entire focus right now is, is on rehabbing and getting himself healthy. That immediately tells you it's a really bad injury. You know, he probably since it was the final year of his deal, he probably put out took out one of those injury injury contracts. Yeah. Guaranteeing his future earnings, just the like insurance Wolf insurance. Had to. yeah, Lord London's insurance for a million dollars. And maybe. He could walk away from this thing with a ridiculous amount of money that might never have to make him play football again. I don't know. I don't know. This is something. No, no, I don't, I, I, I don't either. I'm just answering the question that it's, it's spitballing. I'm not reporting anything. Yeah. I'm just saying, let's, let's just say that his future is cloudy. That, that's. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, this is why players do not want to play on a final year of their contract. This is a classic case of why, which is why I am shocked that Tyreek doesn't have a new deal. Like, guaranteed money's up, but brother. That means the deal's up. Not that they're going to cut Tyreek anytime soon. And actually, he's under contract. 2025? Sorry, what? Huh? Oh, he'll never see 2020. He'll never see 2025, 20, 2026. I was going to say, well, he doesn't have any guaranteed money past this year. Yep. Just saying. Uh, Dirk Bill, thank you very much. Just to be clear, promotions and employment across all business is about politics, and humility is king. Mm. Mm -hmm. There, there is some, there's some validity there, but I, again, talent also talent trumps everything. You, what well, time out? You said politics, you can't change your mind. You said it was more about politics okay, than talent. you're right. Pol I mean, the NFL is about politics, but talent should trump everything. And if Jarvis's talent was worth more putting up the bull putting up with the potentially getting bitten by the dog then he'd, he'd have a job and unfortunately but but his homeboy um uh odell beckham keeps getting employed so well he just getting he's on the market now yeah i know and he'll probably be in the market for a long time 
Yeah, because I didn't. From what I saw of him last year, I didn't see anything special anymore. Mm -hmm. He used to be a stud, but Gary Williams, thank you very much. What do you think about a return of Agba? When I'm pretty sure Agba would be open to it, but I don't know exactly what this defensive coordinator wants or is looking for. So I have no idea. I am a little bit surprised Ogba hasn't found. I'm sure he's a second tier, maybe third tier free agent, but you know, sometimes this gotta, league is kind. You gotta be a four three D is what I keep saying. Uh -huh. If you if your base if you play with three down line and more often than not, I, I don't know that he's your guy. Uh -huh. Uh JT twenty four. Any chance we keep Chubb after this year? Love your show. Thank you, JT. Appreciate that. Yes, uh, if he performs. If he delivers. I mean, I know he's coming off an injury. They're, they're, they're going to have a complete chance of resetting their team in 2025. So yep. Yep. we have no idea. I got to start looking at what the heck's available in 2025. Yeah. This is the part where you're going to get people tell you, like, dude, can you focus on 2024 already? Well, I warned you about the apocalypse. I got I got to warn you what's coming next. Okay, no, yeah, but we have to retire that term. Uh, Jorge Rubio, thank you very much. Thanks for all your hard work. What's the weakest unit right now? How do you improve it? Why are you, why are you going like this? Because I'm, I'm, thank you, Jorge, because I saw he gave fifty dollars. I don't know what MX means. I'm Mexican, not a, come on. Mexican? He yeah. gave us fifty pesos. 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 I, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, um, weakest unit. Go ahead, you first. Wide receiver. What? What? With Hill and Waddle, that's the weakest unit on the team. Really? Oh, is a wide receiver unit two people? No, but even if okay, even Hill Waddle, Eric Izukama, and then and then who? Hold on. And Eric, and and honestly, I'm being generous, letting Eric Uzukama slide. Okay. Uh, and then. Yeah, and Braylon Sanders, there you go. You still have Hill and Waddle. Okay. I, he said unit, not starting group. I, I, I understand that, but when, okay. you, when you have so tell like, me, tell me what's weaker than the wide receivers. Please share. E educate me. Thank you. Hold on. Rest, hold on. I rest my case. Guard. The, the same unit, same guys that started at the end of the year. Liam Eikenberg, Robert Hunt, Lester Cotton. Oh, well, Robert, Robert Hunt's in Carolina, dude. I'm sorry, Robert Jones. Liam Eikenberg, Robert Jones, Lester Cotton. I, they started. All those guys started like nine games. Eric Uzukama and, is your number three receiver. Eric Uzukama. And you play two wide receivers pretty much all the time. Okay. So, okay. Oh, don't do that. Omar, Omar's going wide receiver. I'm going guard. You got three guys with starting experience. You don't have three receivers. Tell me, tell me, you could not use an upgrade over three of those, over pretty much all of those guys. If you're gonna be honest about it. Okay, you could. You tell okay. me you can't use an upgrade over Eric Uzukama. Yeah, behind okay. behind one of the best starting tandems in the NFL. All right, fair. I'll allow it. Oh, hold on. I deserve one of these. Come on, do it. There you go. All right. Okay. I still disagree with you. I still think guards. Uh, the thing you, gave, Julia, you gave it to me. Sorry. <laughs> you greedy. I, super fish. <laughs> Thank you very much. Super fish. After signing all of the defensive dudes, do you think Greer will try to trade down a few spots? Also, please keep the history segments. Thanks. Uh, got a couple of comments on that on the history segments. People like them. So there you go, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what was his question? I, I got distracted by your uh, possibility <laughs> of trading down. Of course, he's going to want to trade down. Is he ever going to be in position to trade down? No. Whenever he needs to trade down, he can't. Whenever he needs to trade up, he can't. Like, you know, whatever you need to do, you're going to be able to do the opposite. So it's more likely he's going to trade up than he's going to trade down. It's a lot tougher to trade down when you get the 21 pick than, you, than when you have the number three pick when they, like they did in 2021. That was easy because there was a lot of demand for that. I, I, I 2021 draft. I wish that the Dolphins had more picks. However, and, and that's more about replenishing the roster. And, and the way that they're building this team, hell, they might just go sign every restricted free agent out there in the NFL right now. I, and I don't actually don't think that's a bad strategy. 
because according to you, it doesn't count against your compensatory pick formula. The restricted free agents are who are not who are not extended or qualifying offers. Yeah, ex- nobody's going to extend a restricted free agent two point eight million dollars. That's a lot of money for restricted. There were, free there were like about fifteen players around the league who got who got really offers. yes. Wow, that's surprising. Fifteen players. Uh, if you give me a second, I'll tell you. I'll keep talking. I'll grab the list. Um, yeah. So I mean, you're talking about talent like. Robert Jones and Elijah Campbell, who are good players who belong in the NFL, young, trending upwards players, but teams are just not going to allocate two point eight million dollars to them, uh, and that's an original. That's a a, a a tender with an opportunity to match. And if you think about those players, these are guys who have established themselves in the NFL for three years or or two years you're basically able to go sign and court young talent, draftable young talent that would probably be on par with draft prospects. Like you should go clean up every RFA that didn't get a tender. And that's what they did when they signed Jody Fortson. And they did that with what, Benito Jones? Who else Correct. Was- Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I think- stand corrected. There are seven of them. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant strategy. I, I, I actually do. I'm not, I'm not even, you know, I'm not a huge Chris Greer is a genius kind of guy, but I, I would be trying to clean up on RFAs to supplement the my my piss poor depth of my roster. Like I'd sign all of them, every single every single guy. You know who's one of those players? By, by the way, I'm going through the list right now. Not exactly, not exactly a Pro Bowl roster. If we're going to be honest about it, uh, I mean, Lynn Bowden Jr. is one of those. Yeah, he 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 basically just asked Waddle to tell him come get me. Who did he finish the season with? New Orleans Saints. Oh yeah, okay. He yeah, I saw on Twitter like Waddle. He basically was like once a reunion and come get me and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, all right, like Lynn Bowden Jr., talented guy. Do I think he'll ever learn the offense? Eh, probably not. By the way, uh, Jonathan Harris, the defensive tackle they signed from the Broncos, also was an untendered, restricted free agent. I think it's a brilliant strategy. I really do. Uh, props to, the, to whoever came up with it. Okay. Uh, not a call, Hippo. Thank you very much. Herbert gets all the excuses because he's a, the golden boy and Tua is not. I ain't say it. Herbert did. Herbert said what? That her, nautical hippo. Herbert, no, uh, not Herbert. Nautical not hippo, hippo said it. Yeah, nautical hippo said it. That's and right. I agree with him. Okay. We gonna make we gonna make a laundry list of excuses too against not a single damn excuse. <laughs> oh Mark, come on! The, and this, by the way, for those who ask me, like, why was it you don't like you don't like Tua? I have nothing against Tua. I have I have problems with comments like that. Like over here, what you just said, say it again with a straight face that there's never been any excuses made for Tua when the performance hasn't been up to par. Say it with a straight face. Go ahead. I dare you. <laughs> Thank you. There's never been an excuse made for two. <laughs> well done. Right. Well done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. There are excuses made for Tua. But I would like I there are don't act like there aren't excuses made for Herbert. Of, of course. Yeah. I'm not, right. not denying that. Uh Finn's Arcade, thank you very much. Do players get health insurance after they retire? I think every player after X amount of years should have guaranteed health insurance for the rest of their lives. I believe they're covered for like the first five years after their playing careers are over. I, I'm, I need to double check that, but they're covered for like a couple of years. I believe so. Do they not? I I don't know. I'm wondering if it's the same requirement for a pension where it's a certain number of years you have to to play and then you get. Yes. Yes. It's not everybody. It's definitely not everybody. Correct. Yeah, uh, but well, we can look into that. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we, we're going. On, we're getting close to an hour here, so let's let's keep moving here. Alexander George, thank you very much. Do you think McD is a good talent evaluator? Does he help us with the draft more than previous coaches? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't have. He likes fast pick. guys. That's all I know. Yeah, I think you can thank him for the Devon H N pick. I think. Yes, and I think that worked out pretty well for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Zenman 1001, thank you very much again. We give up a first, fourth, and admins for Chubb and signed him to a $110 million contract. In hindsight, would you have made that trade? That's a very good question. Um, Omar? 
he was on the verge of kind of having a respectable Pro Bowl esque season. So I have no problems with it. Um, everybody's getting overpaid in the NFL. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Everybody's being compensated what their market value says that they are <laughs> worth. Edmonds was a t- complete dump. So a first and a fourth and then a big money salary, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, the, the, it, again, the problem is is how how were the Dolphins supposed to know he's going to tear up his ACL uh, late in the game when he shouldn't have been in the, on the field to begin with? Personally, as I've said before, as I'm going to keep saying, had if the Dolphins were willing to pay that price for a game changing defensive player, I'd have preferred they'd gone after Roquan Smith. But that's you are you, yes, you have been very steadfast and committed to that opinion. Right. I, I say you go get that player right now in free agency while it's free. Um, maybe they did that in Jordan Brooks. Who knows? I, I personally have not looked at the film. Free agency is going too fast for me to even look at the film of players now. Um, when things slow down in round two, I'll take a look. And I, and I am starting with Kendall Fuller. And then I'll move. We'll issue an apology if you were if you were wrong. I, I am. I am going to. One, I didn't say anything critical of him. Let's let's put that on the record. All I said was stating what Pro Football Reference is claiming are his numbers, passer rating, poor, completion percentage, poor, touchdowns allowed, disastrous. Yes. It was Cater Cohuish. And I don't know because I have not looked at the film. And when I look at the film, if I disagree with it, I will state that so there you go that's the way to do it there you go that's the way to do it I, I, listen i always give everybody a, a blank slate when they get here but that doesn't mean we, like we sit here with the brewer kid what do they say about his run block about his pass block great phenomenal run blocker disaster is a pass blocker yeah. we have to state that like he, he has issues pass blocking okay so I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. My whole career, I spent my entire life as a journalist being. I don't want anybody to say, "Well, you never told us that." Um, that's my my daily. I wake up in the morning and I want to do my job with the ability to have you say, "Well, Omar told us," and that that's all I, I will ever do, and my, that's what my focus is, and. I, I need you to know I, th- these are the issues with with the with the Fortson kid can't stay healthy. You need when we when Dolphins sign these players, we got to tell you what the issue is. If if we don't do that, that we're not doing our job. Correct, and and that's good or bad. We're not here to do like woo everything. Know, really like, no, this organization's been dysfunctional for two decades. Oh, like, yep. like. Yeah. Longest playoff drought in the NFL. You should, want, you should want and need the truth. Correct. And then so you get cut us some slack if we're not as positive as you'd like us to be. Uh, Carlos Beltran, do you see the – thank you very much. Do you see the Dolphins bringing in the quarterback to challenge Tua? Z- zero chance. Zero chance. Not happening. Yep. Dirk Bill, thank you very much. How much influence do you think that Anthony Weaver has over player acquisition? A lot. I think a lot. Chris no, Greer is going to. Chris Greer is going to. Well, going to pick his brain, but I'm, by influences, he, he's not going to make a decision. He's going to. They're going to ask. They're going to ask Anthony Weaver. Absolutely. Anthony Weaver is giving him a top twenty list of players that he wants in free agency, and Chris Greer's job is to go get that. That's what Chris Greer does. These guys fit into my scheme. Chris Greer will be like, "Okay, I'll go shop for them." That's all he does. He Chris Greer is a past the buck GM. Fair and then, but in the draft is Chris Greer scouts again. It's going to be a collaboration. It'll be, it'll be a collaborative effort. But Anthony Weaver will give him a top twenty list of these are the players that I want. These are the players that fit in my scheme, and Chris Greer will go get them. That's all he does. That's what he well, does. He, but it, no, here's the thing though, because Anthony he has, Weaver, he's a GM who has no conviction ever, ever, <laughs> okay. ever. Okay. What I'm going to this say comes from is this, Anthony this comes from Weaver worked for him, worked against him. People who still work with him, a man with no conviction. Only conviction he's ever had in the organization is drafting Minka Fitzpatrick, which nearly caused a feud. Okay, Omar, what, what, what I was going to say, though. And Tua. Anthony Weaver. Mm, yeah, but that's uh, a, that no, 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 a collaborative no. effort. That was a collaborative effort, but you know your head coach didn't want him. Correct. 
So he had to be deciding vote. Or the owner. Thank you. Or the CFO. Or or the CEO. Correct. Correct. Again, team organizational decision. Oh, wait, Uh, that coach doesn't want him. Anthony Weaver is is not a scout. So Anthony Weaver is not going to be able to go like in the draft and go, this is the the guy that I want. He can tell him this is the type of guy I want. Or he, like for in the in the NFL, he I mean, is, coaches coaches give the coaches give guys their list. Coaches gives guys their list. Of guys that they've seen play. It's not like they're scouting college oh, players. They look at the scout. They look at the film. They look at the film and they talk about it. And they sit in these meetings and they say, "This is a guy that fit perfectly in my scheme. This is how I envision him contributing. This is what role that he will play. Um, this is how I see him using year one." Coaches absolutely unequivocally. I'm not. I'm not telling you something that I don't know. And they give. They give career their list. And Greer has to factor that in. That's how he ro- rolls. How he rolls. Okay. He because he he not having a conviction about anybody. He had a conviction about Minka. He did. He fought for Minka. He did. And can we can't complain about the the pick? The dude was all the pick. Lamar Jackson, but we got Minka. All right. Next 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 thing. Yeah, I think these are. Their, all the super chat questions we have, and we have reached an hour. We're we have, done with super chat. I believe so. Yes. How much influences Anthony? Okay. Um, I, I'd rather have the players we have now than. Okay, let's look at this one. I'd rather Xavier says I'd rather have the players we have now than pay Wilkins. Uh, Sealer should be okay as a starter. Same production basically last year. Mm. I don't, I understand the line of thinking that I got to look up what Christian Wilkins year one cap hit is, but people are saying, okay, the allocation of money that you get, you would have paid Christian Wilkins went to three different players. And Alan Poupard was the first person, this guy over there that way. What did I do now? He was the first person that brought that up. Would you rather have Christian Wilkins or three players? And I was like, mm, three players, but you know, it is what it is, man. We know we know the position that this franchise was in. They couldn't afford to keep their young developmental talent. I was literally on the phone with a player today who basically said, "We all we do is pay our own. I mean, all we do is pay other people's players. We don't play our own." And that that's a reputation that predates Chris Greer. It, it, it's it's a very long standing reputation, and it continues moving forward. Now, do I do I want to? I think everybody got – I think everybody except Andrew Van Ginkle got overpaid. That left. Everybody. Name me somebody who didn't get overpaid other than Van Ginkle. Uh, you think Van Ginkle did not get overpaid at 10 I don't think he got, pop? I don't think he got overpaid. I think Van Ginkle got – relatively maybe a million more than I would have wanted to pay him or a million more than fair market value. But I think Van Google got probably a, a very good deal. Um, every like Rob Hunt and I love Rob Hunt. You know, I love Rob Hunt hundred million dollars. You do hundred million. And I'm happy for him. Hundred, hundred milli. Like, and I love Rob Hunt and Christian. Wouldn't they, would have never gave him that deal. His first cap, his first year cap number is eleven point five mil. So that's basically two players. But and what does it jump to in year two? Thirty five. Thirty what? Thirty five. Thirty five. That's what I cap said. Up, t- 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 run that back by me again. Thirty five million ca- Thirty-five. Year cap five. What's year three? Thirty one seven. Oh my but, god! But he's out of gallon. He's out of guarantees. He's out of guarantees in year. So he's only got guarantees in the first two years of the deal. Yep. So it's only a two-year deal. Uh, uh, if they if they walk away in what's the guarantee? Twenty six. They they'll save twenty million in cap space and eat twelve million. And if they make it a June first, they would eat six million. And save twenty six million, which so is they, a salary. They could walk away. They could walk away after two years. What's his guaranteed money? Uh, guaranteed salary is thirty three five. No, uh, guaranteed. Guaranteed. What's what's his? Hold total? on, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, 
20, it's 35, 53, yes, yeah, uh, 78 looks like. Okay, so that's the three, that's three years. See, he, he's probably got a, a date where the third year gets, becomes fully guaranteed. Like, you, you got me scared over here. Like, like he's, Christian only signed a two-year deal, but mm, oh, it is what it is. He's got, he's got a crap load of guaranteed money, so how, who cares how long it's for? You're, you're correct. Well, all right. That's all right. okay. almost as good as being it fully guaranteed. You know, this is why this is why we're getting into the semantics of like fully guaranteed. No, it's not fully guaranteed. But um, mm -hmm. Deshaun Elliott got overpaid. Jay, I'm 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 sorry. I'm not paying Deshaun Elliott. Dude, he got three million a year. I mean, seriously, that's that much. Uh, Jordan Page a connection that Rogers to Poyer is Hayahuasca. Hayahuasca. I have no idea what that is. Sorry, that's I don't know. Okay, if you say so. Exactly. I think there's one more, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. All yeah, right. That was the last one. Oh no, actually, it's for you, uh, Grant. Thank you very much. Oh, after this free agency, you need to start saying the cap isn't always what it seems instead of fake. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I, listen. When the cap becomes real, when you're financially responsible with it. When you uh, conduct business like the New Orleans Saints, which I think the Dolphins have learned to stop doing, um, it becomes real. And the way that they've structured things, yeah, they're out. They're they're not going to be in cap hell much longer because their entire team is on option years in 2025. So, and it's real, and it's, yeah, that's why you have moves that are made like this. And and for example, the Chargers don't get rid of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams this offseason if it wasn't for the cap. Yeah, and, and that's that's because they got themselves like this. Yeah, Buffalo too. Yep. All righty. Yep, folks. We appreciate you for joining. We appreciate you for watching. We appreciate you for contributing. We thank you for coming and and thank you for watching us recap the first week of free agency. We will be here every single day, Monday through Friday, unless something happens to one of us. Actually, aren't you going on vacation or something like that? I am going away next week not the end of next week okay yes so i don't know what we'll do because i don't know if i could live a day without alan Tupard. so oh god that's scary we'll we'll figure it out we'll figure, right. out. We'll figure out something out we thank you guys we will see you later unless something happens this weekend we'll see you tomorrow all right, all right. you know how we roll on all the ultimates.com you know how to find us um right there for for free no paywall no subscription you know how it is, um, and we'll see you later.